I've harped on this for years on this channel. People are sick of me harping on it, but... As of about a month ago, Rick Beato has made precisely one gajillion videos impotently yelling at pitch correction and quantizing. And I want to know, how is he still getting away with this? How is this clown still respected among the music YouTube community? Why are people still listening to him? It's the same ignorant, unsubstantiated shit every time. It's barely worth arguing against. After all this time, he seemingly still doesn't know anything about music production and obviously doesn't care to learn. Like, you know that decrying beat correction is laying a blanket claim of ineptitude on my entire genre, right? When electronic music isn't quantized, it ends up becoming the entire signature sound of that artist. Grid aligned beats is simply where I live, and I've made people cry with them, Rick. Why don't you give it a shot? And pitch correction too. Such a simple thing with so general a use case that it can serve basically any artistic end. It can sound like this, or this, or this. You're not going to win this battle, motherfucker. It's like trying to take procedural noise out of the visual effects industry. This latest curmudgeonly ramble mentions T-Pain by name, which makes sense because he popularized that modern R&B vocal processing sound, but he also mentions that T-Pain can actually sing. The amazing thing about T-Pain is that he can actually sing really well. You just rarely hear it. Shouldn't that give you pause? Don't these two pieces of information conflict in your boomer brain? T-Pain can sing, T-Pain uses autotune, so clearly he sees it as an aesthetic end outside of just patching up his voice, right? What's not clicking? This newest video really sinks to new lows. He takes a swing at comping in this one. Like, the practice of splicing different takes together, not even pitch corrected takes, just one take here and another take here. Now, I'm not sure why Phineas showed that, because to me, the idea is that you showcase a person's singing ability. No, stop right there. Music isn't made for the purpose of shallowly impressing elitist old men anymore. You've stumbled butt backwards into this profession with wrong-headed ideals and you need to start over. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Also in this newest video is a truly stupendous reach to try and connect autotune and quantization to AI art, as if these tools were a dark harbinger for the eventual complete automation of music. But if songs are gonna be hyper edited through pitch correction, timing correction, note by note guitar parts. There, there are guitar players out there that punch in every single note. Every note is fixed. Every note is, is manipulated somehow. Computers can easily do this right now. And they will get better at this over time. And the, the thing is that the general listener doesn't know the difference. And they frankly don't care. And I don't think that they're going to care when musicians and songwriters are replaced by AI. His efforts to connect diffusion engines with digital audio workflows only serve to magnify his ignorance regarding both. Like, the reason that you associate unwavering pitches and rhythms with computer music is because the computer doesn't fucking do anything on its own, so every piece of error or fluctuation needs to be programmed in manually by the user. Diffusion engines, by contrast, just process data directly into raw ore and form it back together atom by atom. It's actually a lot easier to get it to sound like this. <laughs> Your human performances are being harvested too. You're not safe. The only way forward is to recognize music as auditory art and not a goddamn sport. Human inspiration and not human error. Listen to NTS sessions and reconsider your life.